Do you ride a Dyna? I have one of the best upgrades you can make. Stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you all about it. All right, guys, today we are talking about the Spooth PosiTrack chassis stabilizer. One of the best upgrades you can make to your Dyna to help your wobble issues. I'm gonna tell you all about the kit, what comes in it. I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step on how to install here on this 07 CVO Dyna. I have these currently available on the website at tuckerspeed.com. I try and keep them in stock all the time. I'm gonna throw in a one-time use code somewhere in this video, so stay tuned, look for it. It's gonna happen quick, so pay attention. Uh, a couple of you guys commented last time that your code wasn't working, and that's because you were late to the game. Somebody already used it. So look for it. If you wanna use it, you better use it quick. And to not miss out on future ones, uh, hit the subscribe button, go in and turn on your notification bell so you'll get notified when we've dropped new videos and you can try and use them one-time use codes. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps us out. We're gonna be bringing you a bunch more videos. I'm gonna jump into this and start talking about what's in this kit and then I'll show you how to install it. All right, so here's the kit. If you're ordering this kit and you're gonna install it yourself, this is what you're gonna get. It's gonna, this is what it's gonna look like when you get it. This is a complete kit. It comes with everything you need to do this. Uh, I'm gonna bust this thing open. And tell you what everything is, explain, because uh, the, the directions it comes with doesn't really have any photos of what's what. You can go on Spooth's website and find all that info, uh, but I'm gonna kind of tell you what everything is right now. That's part of the front. This is part of the rear. These two gold fine thread bolts are part of the rear setup. Get this tape off my hands. Uh, you're gonna have this long set screw, with an Allen key in one end. You're gonna need that for the rear. These, uh, these linkages come with these little like uh, weatherproof seals that just keep moisture and dirt and stuff out of them. So you don't have to have them on there, but I def definitely recommend using them. Just extend the life of that heim joint. Part of the rear, this kit here is the front. I love this vacuum pack stuff. It's so easy to get into. So, get rid of that. So, when you're looking at all this, everything here is for the rear. The way this kind of sets up in the frame, you'll see later when we start installing it is uh, these sit here and the stabilizer link goes between them. Front kit mounts something like that when it's in the bike, but uh, just to give you an idea of what goes where, kind of separates it all. I'm going to jump in, start showing you guys how to do, we're going to do the front first and we'll jump into the rear. The front's super easy. Spooth tells you that you can do this uh, in an hour. Uh, I tend to disagree with that. It takes a little bit more. I like to pull the exhaust out of the way. Some exhaust, you have to take it out of the way. Depending on the year, there's a wire bundle that you may have to move around. You might have to move the rear brake fitting, kind of loosen it and rotate it down. Uh, but overall, it's a fairly easy install. No modifications required. Everything bolts right up, fits the way it should. These kits are 
100% made in USA, uh, which is nice. They work on all your Dynas. This is one kit part number that fits 91 to 17. It fits everything, uh, including the 16 and 17 Lowrider S. So I'm gonna jump over, start uh, showing you what I got going on to install the front. We'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna jump into installing this front kit. These kits are compatible with like most crash bars and chin spoilers, oil coolers. This bike does have a chin spoiler. I hope that it's going to fit. I'm gonna pull this off and we're gonna kind of size everything up and see how it fits. So I'm gonna get this thing out of the way. I think I have plenty of room behind this chin spoiler to make everything fit, but you never know. I have not installed one on this bike, the CVO that has this chin spoiler before, so I'm not sure. All right, so first problem is, is this uh, chin spoiler mount is like kind of right in the way. This is actually gonna come in here and I'm gonna remove these two bolts and this is supposed to go in there like this, uh, but they're interfering with each other. This bracket kind of comes up tall. It's got two holes here. This isn't being used for anything. So what I might do is I might just come in and chop this bracket right off here and then mount this plate behind it. And then I think I can make everything work. Um, I'm gonna give that a shot and see what happens. I'm gonna pull these two motor mount bolts out. Uh, but before you do that, I have my lift under here with a block of wood that's just gonna lift up. Just hold the motor take the weight off of everything while I pull these two bolts loose. Just yeah, set that right there. All right, I got that cut off. I'll go mock this up, see how it fits. All right, so, I've got my chin spoiler bracket notched. Uh, this doesn't apply if you don't have it. I'm gonna see how this fits. The instructions, uh, when they're talking about uh, pulling these front two bolts, they want you to do one at a time. It keeps everything aligned. I made the mistake of pulling them both out because I didn't realize that bracket was notched. So I kind of had to force it back into alignment. But uh, just keep in mind that just do one at a time. It makes it easy. And then earlier, I just realized I made a mistake. These two shorter stainless Allen head bolts go to the front kit. They, they go here. Uh, earlier, I said they were part of the rear kit, and that was a mistake. Uh, so I'm going to test this out and see how this is going to fit, if this is going to work out. Looks like I gotta trim a little bit more of this bracket off, but then it should be fine. So I'm gonna pull this off and trim a little bit more of this bracket out of the way. And then I think everything should be okay. So if you're installing this without a chin spoiler, which most likely you will be, uh, once you get this installed, this front bracket should look something like that. Just not to kind of block the view with this bracket of what's going on without it. I'm not gonna tighten these all the way down. I'm just gonna get them snug till I get everything installed. All right, so next step is remove the two bolts that attach the front motor mount to the engine case. So we're just gonna get these out and remove them completely.
This is where I like to use my jack to kind of find a spot that it kind of relieves tension from that bolt. Loosen this back one and see. I'm going to slide out of there pretty easy. They say the bolt should come straight out, but it always hits the frame for me. All right, so on this kit, I cannot get this front old motor mount bolt out. It hits the frame before it comes out. So you kind of have two options. First option is just reuse those stock bolts. Mount this to this side. Mount it there. And then you'll mount this bracket the other way. And then you'll run your linkage this way. That's one option. Your other option is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to pull the oil filter and I'm going to loosen up where this block mounts to the engine case so that this can move, and then I can mount it with the new hardware. doesn't really matter which way you mount this. It works the same either way. Um, I just want to be able to use the new hardware. So I'm going to loosen the, or move the filter and loosen this block so I can swap that out. All right, so I got this block loose from the case. I got one bolt out and one bolt loose just to let this thing kind of move around. While I have it loose, I'm gonna put my two long uh, stainless bolts up through here. All right, so I got everything installed. Everything's just loose right now. I'm gonna put a little red Loctite on everything. All right, so at this point, I've got the lower bracket installed, the upper bracket installed. I just have them loose right now. I've got the linkage started on the one end. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start, I'm gonna torque uh, my motor mounts down and then I'll align my linkage and torque those. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque the two upper rubber mount to engine case and the two front uh, rubber mount to frame bolts. four of these torque down to 200, uh, 25 foot pounds. And then I can align my linkage. If you do use their bolts, a long 
ball Allen will be your friend to get in here. If you did opt to do it this way, where we loosen the block from the case, don't forget to go back up and torque those guys down. While I'm right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the oil filter back in. All right, so now that everything's tight, you can go ahead and adjust your linkage. And they are opposite threads, so you can just turn the adjuster and it'll extend it. Let's get it to where it uh, slides through nice. So the order that these go together uh, is the bolt goes through the bracket and then you got your little rubber dust seal another dust seal. Washer. And this is a nylock, but just for good measure, I'm gonna put a little Loctite on it. Hold on to it. Okay, that's it for the front. I'm gonna throw the uh, chin spoiler back on it. I might leave the chin spoiler off for now because I may need to pull these wires back and reroute them for the rear. I'll show you that here in a minute. Oh, last thing, I've gotta tighten up our jam nuts on the adjuster. Just run each lock nut out to the outer portion of the heim. Just hold the center and tighten these up. All right, so now that I have the front kit installed, uh, to just kind of give you an idea of like, you know, what this thing's doing and how it works, um, you know, your engine and transmission unit and the swing arm is mounted to the transmission can move separately from the frame you know it's all mounted on rubber so it lets everything kind of flex you know in those rubber mounts what this does is takes away the ability for it to flex side to side and only allows it to flex up and down so this is basically locking the engine to the frame in a side to side motion so it does not allow the motor to move and the rear wheel to kind of move with the the swing arm to move with the whole motor side to side and, and that's where you get this wobble on these dynas. So it still allows everything, it's still, allow, you know, you have the rubber isolator so you don't have a ton of vibration in the frame. It allows it to move up and down, but side to side it kind of locks everything in place. All right, so now I'm moving on to the rear kit. Uh, depending on your exhaust, you're either gonna have to remove the whole thing or a portion of it uh, to get in there and access that motor mount. It wants you to remove the rear wheel. You might be able to sneak it out of there without pulling the rear wheel, but if you can, it's a lot easier with the wheel out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the exhaust and the wheel out of the way real quick, and then get into that motor mount. Okay, so I have the rear wheel out of the way. I've got the exhaust off and out of the way. Um, you've got to access your two motor mount bolts are right there. So that's why you got to get the exhaust out of the way. We got to get this bracket up in there like that. Um, so we may need to possibly move this wire bundle. We may need to move this banjo fitting out of the way. So there's a few things we might have to do to kind of clear some room out of here. So um, I got to move this belt guard because there's, uh, uh, there's nuts on the other side of these two bolts here. 
and it's just easier. And then the bolt, the new bolts are gonna come in from the other side and then thread into this bracket. This bracket's threaded. So I'm gonna get the belt guard out of the way so that I can kind of get this up in there and see how it fits and what I need to move. All right, so I'm gonna get up in here with a, a ratcheting wrench and bust the nut loose here. All right, so I'm just gonna pull one bolt out And then I'm gonna grab from my kit, I've got the two long hex head bolts. Slide one of the new ones through coming from the other direction. Once I have that one in, this front bolt right now is like super tight and it's cause it's holding all the weight of the motor on it. So I'm gonna use another jack to kind of release the tension off of it. Go ahead and slide this one through. So I got my two new bolts in place there. Now this bracket is one of the trickier ones of the entire kit, just cause it's such a tight spot in there. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually pull the cap off of this master cylinder. Give me a little bit more room. Just so close, there we go. And the trick is kind of getting one of these started. Actually, I'm gonna pull this back out so that I don't have to pull this back out again. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop some Loctite on the threads of the bracket. Get some Loctite in there. And then I can just leave it all assembled. Got them started. So now that it's kind of in place, try and snug these up a little bit. So it is a tight space to get up in there. Um, I've got a wobbly or universal joint attachment with a socket on there. Makes your life a lot easier if you've got it. If you can get in there with a wrench, it'll just take you a minute. So I'm just gonna snug these up. I'm not gonna torque them yet. So this wire bundle wraps around the back here and it's kind of in the way. If you pop it loose from the zip tie that's holding it, you kind of push it back in and, and make some room. But this banjo bolt's gonna be like right in the way. Once I get the other bracket installed in here, it's gonna sit about like that. And it's hitting here. So I'm gonna loosen this see if I can roll this and just angle it a little bit differently to make some room. That might be. So the frame has a little notch on it. So this is gonna be, this is an 07. So the 06 and up frame, the older one's a little bit different, but the same idea. You think you still have to move it. I'm just gonna roll it outboard, kind of out of the notch, which is gonna point the brake switch a little bit more upward. Okay, so at this point, I've got the top mount installed. I got my bolts just snug, but I don't have them torqued down yet. I kind of rerouted my brake light wires, kind of had to untuck them from the little plastic tray they were tucked in. I have enough slack. I'm just gonna 
push them out of the way for now. Uh, next step is to install the uh, the rear bracket that attaches the frame to the uh, rubber mount. Uh, the kit comes with this long set screw. So what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to loosen both of these bolts, remove one, install the set screw, and then remove the other. And then I'm going to install the set screw into that. I just want to install that, you know, towards got good thread engagement. Just leave the head of it sticking out a little bit. The reason we're doing that is, is now I can remove the bottom one, but everything stays in line and it doesn't allow it to move. So now I can pull this rear, the other bolt out, the bottom one. And then I'm going to take the bolt out of the top hole and then just install it with the rear or the bottom bolt. Grab my Loctite. Just throw a little Loctite on this. If you want, you just pull both bolts out and just kind of make it a little easier to get it up in there. Get it kind of slid over. All right, so I got the bracket in place over the top of the set screw. I'm going to start this bottom bolt. I can go in and grab the set screw. So pull the set screw back out. You don't need that anymore. A little Loctite on the top bolt. Just gonna make sure these screws are turned all the way inward. Right now, I tighten everything, which they are. But yeah, once we get everything locked down, we'll thread them out to where they contact the frame and then lock the lock nut down. We'll torque these to 25 foot pounds. And then these brackets are installed. This main kind of wire bundle that runs down the underneath of the bike is kind of right in your way. I have done a few of these where I've actually undone everything up front and pulled it all the way back and routed it to rather come up over this bracket. I routed it down and under and back down around the, the frame rail. I'm going to see if, how tight it is once I get the link in there, see what it looks like. And then the other thing is it's got this little, it's this little breather tube that comes down in there. You're going to want to reroute it as well. Don't get it in behind your bracket. Okay, so I got all four motor mount bolts torqued to 25 foot pounds. Next step is you wanna run these little quarter inch, the 7 16 hex on it, bolts out. and snug them against the frame. One of my 7 16 wrenches I've ground down. It's like super thin. I use it for push rod adjustments and stuff, but it works good because getting two like kind of thick headed wrenches in there at the same time is kind of tight. All right, so that's all locked in place. Next step is to install the linkage. So we're gonna try and attach it to the difficult side first. So put on our little dust caps, a little bit of Loctite, and then see what we can do about this wire bundle. Like I said, I have it detached. There's a little wire clip that holds it in place right there. All right, I got it started. These bolts on these ones are uh, 3 8 
12 point head. So I got it started. As you kind of tighten that up, just make sure it doesn't pinch that bundle or nothing. There's enough room there. It's tight, but there's enough room for that wire loom to live there. Just make sure when everything gets snugged up, kind of push it down and out of the way. I snug this guy up. Now kind of the same as the front. Just uh, extend this linkage till you get to the right length. Put a little bit of Loctite. Put a little weather seal on there. Kind of run that out until it lines up. Go ahead and snub these guys up. So that's kind of working, like I said, the same thing on the front. It's not gonna let anything flex side to side or twist side to side at all. It's gonna keep everything in line. All I got left is uh, put the wheel in, the belt guard, the exhaust back on put the chin spoiler back up front and be ready to go. All right, so wrapping up, I got the rear wheel in, I got the exhaust on, I got the chin spoiler on. I got to align my rear wheel, which is what gonna be one of the most critical things. Don't waste all your time by putting this stuff on and then not aligning your rear wheel. Just being counterproductive at that point. Um, I see a lot of guys spend a ton of money on upgrading suspension. You know, nice shocks, monotube kits in the front, whatever. But it doesn't eliminate that flex, you know, that flex, you know, if you can picture this, the motor transmission swing arm are one unit and the frame is separate and they can, they can flex. And you've now put a link between the two that they can't flex side to side. Still lets it move up and down, but not side to side. And that's really the, you know, the cause of the, the dyno wobble. So you fix that. So spend your money on this spooth kit first and then start adding suspension. Make sure you've got good motor mounts, good wheel bearings, good swing arm bearings, good steering head bearings. All that stuff's gotta be in good shape too. It can't be you know, junk, it can't be worn out and blown out or you're still gonna have problems. So everything's gotta be in good shape. This spooth kit will be cash money. Stay tuned, we'll have more videos coming. Gonna have more install, more comparison videos, more product reviews, so stay tuned, thanks. Is this thing on? <laughs> Bad. Spooth. Good. God damn it. Dino bros.